wellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. Welcome to Nourishing the Mother, featuring your hosts, Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner. Hello, welcome to Nourishing the Mother. I'm Julie Tenner. And I'm Bridget Wood. And today's podcast is sponsored by Nature Direct, specifically Jackie Kidman, who is a wonderful local woman who is a mover and shaker in terms of creating her own inspired business. Um, Nature Direct are a chemical-free cleaning company, and they have really strong values around family and just creating beautiful products for the home that are also gentle on people, which we love. And Jackie... And fabulous cleaners. You and I both use them in our homes. Yeah, I'm a bit of a fan. And their mop. And the mop. <laughs> I the mop. tell you about the pleasures of the mop there's from this, Nature Direct. There's this amazing mop, and it's like, I don't know, if you could electrify a mop, it's practically what you would imagine if you could electrify a mop. <laughs> like, it kind of goes in this bucket, and you whiz it around. It whizzes. And, yeah. Very exciting. So, there's a cool mop, so if you're interested, check out the mop. But um, we love Jackie, and, and we really thought that it was a great podcast to align to, because the topic this month is money blocks. And... It's a massive topic because so many of us have issues around financial wealth and creating wealth. Yeah. And we thought that, you know, Nature Direct and Jackie and all these kinds of, I guess, um, business opportunities. Inspired that, women. Yeah, inspired mm. women doing things a bit differently and choosing their own way. And to be able to do those things, you actually have to do it. It's a mindset thing. It's a massive mindset thing. So we're going to dive into that topic today. And your business only grows to the extent that you are willing to, right? Yes, exactly. And anyone so, who's in business knows all about that. Those yeah. walls you hit and those self-limiting beliefs that you have to unpack yeah, in order to grow to the next level. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. So if we're talking about money blocks, I want to backtrack a little bit and talk about what is wealth. Because as a society, we so much attach wealth to being wealth of a financial means. But in fact, wealth represents the things to us that make our life worthwhile. And that's going to look different for all of us, depending on what our values are. So for some of us who have a a massive value on family, and that's where all of our time and attention and money and focus and thoughts go, then we will have an enormous amount of wealth in our family area, familial area of life. So that's where our greatest connections will be. That's where our greatest relationships will be. Um, whereas if you know you have a massive value on business, then that will be where your wealth is. It'll be in business knowledge. It will be in being able to guide or coach other people in business. So it's looking at wealth being the form of abundance. Yeah, really it is. Mm. It is. And if the whole idea of get, building financial wealth means to link the things that are highest on your values, whether it's family or business or learning, linking those things into building financial wealth so that you can see focusing on saving and investing as adding to those things that are most important to you, not taking away from, because so many people feel like, oh no, but if I save, then I'm depriving myself now. And there's a lot of kind of a wrestle within all of us Mm -hmm. around what it means to, you know, have delayed gratification to build money for the future, to see the value in that beyond simply buying things. It's a real mindset shift to see um, having wealth for wealth's sake as opposed to having wealth to buy things, wealth for Mm. a holiday, wealth for a home, wealth for a nice car, wealth for education. Mm. It's about getting beyond those things to see the benefits to yourself and your community and your world around having a vast, you know, amount of wealth really and what that that can contribute to the world as opposed to it, you know, needing to be about what you can buy with it. And the the big kind of block for most of us is is, is limiting beliefs around our own capacity to deserve wealth because it's, it's intimately linked to your own self-worth. If you don't think that you're worthy to have money, it will immediately go to other people, other things, things higher on your priorities. You, as soon as you get it, it'll just go somewhere else because there's like a, some sense that you don't deserve it and you can't hold on to it and it needs to go elsewhere. Are you hearing me? Oh, Bridget. Yeah. I'm just strapping in for the ride on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see where we go with it. Um, and fear is a big one. So fear, fear around whether you can manage money, fear around the success that money might bring. Mm. So if I have money, then... I'll be different to my family, my friends, they'll judge me or I won't be able to relate to them anymore. Mm. There's so many fears like that that we don't always realize will be limiting us. They'll be capping our ability to grow it and to put 
focus in that area because we'll go, we'll then go back to focusing on what's safe for us, which mm. will be those other higher values. I just feel like going tick, tick, tick. I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, I have that. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing that gets in the way of building wealth is, is the shame and guilt that we all hold. So we've talked in other podcasts, the idea of, um, the shame and guilt that you have towards yourself or someone else in your past is still dictating your future or your present. And we mm. talked about this like in last week's podcast, which was why did you get the past? Cause the past is always running you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So in terms of wealth building, well, wealth, if you think about it, you, you will have heard these like, concepts around like money and, you know, the, the universe is abundant and you know, can, you can manifest money and, you know, money flows where energy goes. But money is love, essentially. Money is an energetic exchange of love that is the form that we used in today's society as our currency. So when you're giving money to somebody for something, you're saying effectively, I love what you have, give it to me. And I'm not saying, oh my gosh, love, like, here, here's a bill. You know, oh, I love this bill. But, but it's <laughs> the love in terms of that balance of support and challenge. So lo- loving in the sense of being grateful for that service. So you're grateful for the service of being able to have gas at your home mm. to warm your house. So that if you look at money as love, then the more money you have, it's almost the more love you have for yourself and for others who you are in that exchange with, mm. which can be a challenging concept because if money is not in your high values, there's not going to be a lot of it. And so mm. then you go, whoa, are you saying that I don't love myself as much as the, you know, that rich yeah, guy yeah. down the street? You know, it's a really challenging concept, but yeah. it's, it's, it's linked to value and also linked to worth. If you don't worth, think you're worth it, you know, you're never going to create it. Also, if you don't have a vision for it, if you don't have a, plan for how you're going to spend that money or invest that money, why would the universe give it to you? Mm. Because if you're creating everything, you also have to create the drive to put yourself into action to create the opportunity to have that. This is really interesting, this whole concept between, I've been really sitting with that this week, this, I know I'm deviating a little bit from money blocks, but that concept of Mm. inspiration versus mm, discipline. Yeah. That it's almost a fine line of both, right? I was listening totally. to this podcast about the author from The Alchemist. What's his name? Pablo oh, Paolo. Um, Paolo Coelho? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yes. I think you say his surname differently, but anyway. Yeah. Yes. That's our westernized version of his Yes, name. yes. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, we're talking about The Alchemist. I'm pretty sure if I Yeah, The Alchemist. Yeah. <laughs> like this crazy multi, 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 multi million dollar selling Oh, it's amazing. Book. It's a beautiful book. And I was listening to his story. Have you listened to that podcast? Is this with Tim Ferriss? Is this the Tim Ferriss Yeah, I, got a, I kind of got halfway through it. I like, was freaking loving on oh, it. Oh, were you? Yeah. I have to get back to it. So it's really interesting. So he was talking about, um, Tim Ferriss had said to him, you know, um, when you hit that roadblock of you're not inspired and you're not interested anymore and, you know, what do you do? Mm. And so this like really profound writer turned around and went, well, I say to the book, you're going to give me a hard time. We're staying here until we sort this out. Yeah. Wow. Essentially. And he, so he said, there's a ma- amount of inspiration takes you so far, mm-hmm. but the rest of it is discipline. Yeah. So I sit in that room for the remainder of that 10 hours of that day and, do it. and I do it every day. Until I get to the other side of that mm. and I have a book. <laughs> I love that. And I thought, yes, because mm. this is where I see so many of my beautiful friends going in adverted commas wrong. Mm. This is where the self-limiting capping, particularly in the entrepreneurial world, comes in because we rely solely on the creation or the creativity mm. or the inspiration and as soon as that dries right. or fizzles out, we go, oh, I'm just not vibing it anymore. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. And I think sometimes in a spiritual kind of community, there can be a, you can, there can be letting yourself off the hook happening. I said, where, where, where people don't go, do it anymore. Oh, well, it's obviously not meant to it's do it. It's not meant to be. Which is rubbish. Oh, I'm not feeling like it yeah. anymore. No, nah, I've been there and done that. Yeah. I'm on to this next thing. Mm. And the creation of ideas, yes, is fabulous, but none of those happen, right? That like the creation of mm. wealth without the, de- the dedication and the discipline mm. to plow through it when it gets hard. Yeah. And I mean, this is that idea that 
I mean, to create something of worth and to create something out in the world and put yourself out there, it's not going to be easy. And it's always a mix between inspiration and groundedness, Mm. you know, because you can't, you need both. Both of those components are required for you to be able to bring something to fruition. I mean, ask anyone, I mean, even, you know, you at the moment with, with writing a book, like, you know, you are going to hit massive blocks. Oh my God, I do. And you are like, it's ridiculous. You're like, what the hell is this rubbish? I shouldn't even be putting this out there. Who am I to do this? This was, this was a mistake. All that kind of stuff. I don't know what I'm doing here anymore. Yeah. What the fuck is this book anyway? Yeah. Like, to- 100%. Yeah, and that's all that limiting beliefs that come up. But that that's that's that edge, right? That's yeah. that edge yeah, where yeah. you, it's like. That's the upper limit. Yeah. And because I see that, I understand it. And so I have the discipline to mm. just keep going mm. because I don't know what the, keep, well, I don't know what the keep going looks like yet, but I just have faith that I have to yeah. keep going because all of those thought processes are essentially just my ego in the terms of my very, um, human capacity for the beliefs mm. I've already set up that say I'm worth this much and I can only earn this much and mm. only these people are like me. And, you know, all of those things I've put into place. Yeah. As soon as I start to hit my outside parameters of what they are before I break through them to the mm. next level, the next creation of wealth, the next whatever of my career, I have to go through those. And so when I'm having those thought processes, I recognize I'm upper limiting. Yeah. I'm hitting that point that somehow within my core being, there's this belief that says I can only be here. Mm. And if I want to go beyond that, I actually have to move through that. And you have to do that soul grating work. And which... you know, and the soul grating work, that work of really working on that soul level mm. doesn't happen without the very human discomfort that comes with discipline, mm. with just showing up just doing consistently. That. And being, being aware of your behaviours too. I mean, as humans, we're incredibly pleasure seeking creatures. You know, as soon as we something's painful, we will look for some kind of instant gratification to take the edge off the pain. Mm. A lot of that comes through things like, you know, we'll, we'll choose a pleasure, like sugary food or, you know, we'll go and veg out on the couch because we can't deal with whatever's going on. And mm. that, I mean, that's okay. It's part of our humanity, but it's about flexing it. It's about continuing to cultivate that muscle of discipline and delayed gratification to get where you want. I mean, that's a massive thing around wealth. It's about saying, no, I'm not going to have this, this right now. I'm choosing instead to save for later. And, you know, no, I'm not going to, to be wooed by that, you know, short term money, Weed. you know, <laughs> but, 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 my world is wooing me all yeah, the time. <laughs> but, but, but massively, I mean, a lot of people can create, people might be able to create wealth, but they'll lose just as quickly because if you're making short term investing decisions, getting caught up in that, you know, unrealistic selling of massive returns, that's not possible. I mean, to really build wealth is about doing it incredibly slowly. It's about and you see this, right? So this is really, this is upper limiting stuff. This is that capping of when we haven't done the underlying stuff of working out um, that our financial, what our financial worth is and mm. what those beliefs are and, you know, how we sit with that money and da-da-da-da-da, all of those beliefs still stay there. So even when we have a huge influx of money, which you see, like I was watching, um, oh, what, there's this documentary sporting series, 30 for 30, that... Um, one of the huge sporting channels did and they had this one called broke Mm. and it was on, um, all of these NBA players mostly that were like multi, 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 multi million dollar earners. Mm. And now they're broke. Yeah. And so it was about the story of what happened. It doesn't matter how much you earn, it's how you manage it. If you can't manage your money. But if you haven't worked out Mm. all of your beliefs that say I'm worthy for this much, it's safe for me to have this much, da-da-da-da-da, you will self-sabotage. Whatever you consciously Mm -hmm. can't give yourself, you will find a way to subconsciously, right? So you're going to – and sometimes that self-sabotaging behaviors – we don't come out going, oh, I want to be bloke. Like I don't. I want to be broke and blow all of my money and be bankrupt. Mm. But if you haven't worked out those basic beliefs, which is what you're talking about, mm. Bridget, in those questions, mm. you will subconsciously self sabotage yes. and, in inverted commas, lose that money. And it's. I mean, a classic example is lottery winners. So, a um, huge, huge proportion of people who win Tats Lotto lose it. Yeah. Or they get sick, or someone near, near them gets sick because I mean. The reality of, of winning Tats Lotto is a fantasy coming true. For every fantasy, that's a hidden nightmare. If mm. you haven't... Because there has to be equal challenge and there, support. There so fantasy and nightmare are two but sides they, they, the go, they go hand in hand. Yes. And the realisation of you know going from average Joe to a $22 million lottery winner, 
for most people, I mean, that would blow your mind, yeah. absolutely blow your mind. And there's so many examples of people, you know, who've been sued by family members for part of the money, who've, you know, whose kids have died of drug overdoses as a result of the, you know, the um, the kind of allowance that they're now being paid. Like, it, shit just happens because it's so outside the realm of what you're used to that you, you don't even know how to deal with it. Mm. So I would say, don't wish for a, don't wish to win touch lotto, you know, because <laughs> Which is funny. Yeah. yeah. But yet the, yeah. But that's a fantasy. We have a fantasy of that. If I could just have that, then my current problems would be gone. You'll just create a whole new set of problems because you have to have problems to help you grow. Mm. And those are pretty hefty problems mm. to work through. Mm. So in terms when we're talking about shame and guilt around money, it's really around because we've talked in the in previous podcast podcasts about how um, shame and guilt kind of drives us now, and we and we are kind of the the big events that have happened in our childhood or in major life experiences, we will hold on to our body remembers them, our subconscious remembers them, stores them until we've equil- equilibrated them, and then they'll go. So, if, if for instance, some people might not be able to build wealth or build money because they feel perhaps in the past that they let down an employer so they don't deserve to have wealth because they left a job before they saw out their notice period. Maybe they didn't work that hard for that job and they didn't feel like that, that they deserved that money. Maybe they had a relationship breakdown or they cheated on a partner and they're feeling guilty about that. Maybe they had an early sexual experience that was that they see as shameful and so that they're feeling... No, so it can shame. be shame and guilt in any area in of life. any area of life. Well, how can you ever be shame and guilt free though if we are You all can't. Things? You can't. So, but, but it's about going back and looking at the biggest charges. So, for instance, um, I did some work on one of mine. I was try- I was doing some work because I thought I can't talk about this without doing some work on it. So I'm just, if you hear a bit of rustling paper, that is me looking at what I've been doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which looks excessive amount of writing. <laughs> <laughs> so this idea of, you know, the fear around creating wealth. So... With some of them, you know, you don't know enough, so you fear rejection from your family. Um, you've got beliefs and fears wrapped up in your ability to create wealth, so you feel like you don't know enough or that you don't have the means to create wealth because you don't, inverted commas, earn enough. Mm. Um, so what you do is you list everything that has stopped you from achieving wealth right now. So I think I listed about 20. Um, and the one that came up for me, which was the biggest charge, which I had the kind of the most, and, and I know it's a bigger charge because I could feel it in my body. Like I could feel a head. Yeah. So maybe talk about what you mean by charge. Yeah. So there's like and charge. We talk about it in terms of like an emotional charge, which mm-hmm. comes from the idea that, you know, our cells have both sides. And if we're too polarized in one particular side, like, so if we're, if we're seeing too much challenge than support, then that's like a charge. It's a charge waiting for you to go back and balance that so that you can see that, like a battery cell, a positive and yeah, a negative positive and challenge negative. and support. If and you've and got our whole too much body, of one flowing, it's waiting to be cleared. That's right. And our whole, if you think about, about our whole body as a vibration and our cells are always changing based on our perceptions, which Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about all the time, like you're influencing mm. the chemistry of your body with your beliefs all the time. Mm. So I could feel it in my body that that was a, oh, okay, that's heavy, you know. And so it was, I haven't worked hard enough to deserve it. Mm. And so I was like, okay, where's that come from? So I had to go back into, like, you know, thinking back, okay, where's it come from? So did you just ask yourself, where has that come from? And you just sat and waited yeah. and listened? And I didn't, I mean, I don't think I got the biggest one, but one of the defining ones for me was from year 12. Because I ca- when I called out back then, you couldn't go online, so I had to call up and get it. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, right, when you think about it? I'm pretty sure I'll, I just read mine in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd moved up to the phone. We could get an automated, like, number. <laughs> so I called up to get my result. And I was, pre- I was kind of dreading it because I was like, I spent a lot of time socialising. I spent a lot of time at clubs with my fake ID. I don't think I worked very hard. <laughs> And so I called up and I got it and I thought, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang no, on. That, that, that's got to be wrong. Like, so I had to call back again because I didn't believe the result that I got. It was much higher than what I thought I'd, I deserved, you know, or that I'd worked for. So I actually had to call back again and get it and confirm that, yes, in, in fact, that was the result. And then I had this sense of, oh, but I felt guilty because I thought I had all these friends who had been so, so studious mm. and had like just done things right, you know, like they'd done, mm. they'd done year 12 the right way. They'd knuckled down and I had 
fits and bursts of it, but I also had a lot of other stuff that I was pursuing. And so I, what I then had to do was go, okay, well, what were the thir- what was, what's 30 benefits to me of not working hard enough in year 12? So here's the linking, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. Basically. So you've gone, here's the belief when I look at what are all my money blocks, the one that has the biggest emotional charge. Mm-hmm. You've asked your subconscious, where has that happened? Where have I picked that mm-hmm. up from? You've come back with this memory of this particular, it may not be the original one, but it's yeah. a memory that yeah. stands quite strongly for you. Mm-hmm. So you've looked at that. Because I mean, that would have been repatterning something from even younger. Like yes. that, Because that probably would have been, oh, like I don't deserve to, I'm not smart enough to get a good, good grade, so I'm just going to coast. That might have been where I was at in my headspace in year 12, mm-hmm. coming from some earlier thing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you chip away, you know, you chip away. But yes, so that's what I did. I thought, okay, well, and the process of looking at benefits is obviously I'm still seeing drawbacks to that. So if it's still running me, I'm still seeing that that was yeah. bad. So you, yes. So you, when you say you're seeing drawbacks in that, in that you recognize that that for you is a really almost hugely shameful or guilty yeah. feeling that's sitting quite heavily in your body, which means you're only seeing that situation mm. one way. It's polarized. And yeah. And I, and I, cause I've, I've said for years, Oh, I imagine what I would have got if I had not really applied myself. Yeah. That's been like my story. Yeah. Well, imagine what I could have gone if I really like actually did try hard. Yeah. So that's still me not loving and not being grateful for cool. yeah, yeah, how yeah. it was. So you're looking at if I'm only seeing the situation one way, where's its opposite? Because its opposite is always there. Yeah. It's a whole. That's right. So, and that's what you're doing yes. right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so right now, so I've gone through and I draw a little wheel. So you, you look at it in every area of life. So you've got seven areas of life. You've got spiritual, mental, vocational, financial, family, physical, and social. And so you go around the wheel of every area of life and you look at the benefits in each of those areas of not working hard enough. So for me, because most of my time and thinking and energy went into socializing, into relationships, into kind of introspection and understanding myself, I listed a whole bunch of benefits to those things. So, you know, I was, what what have I got here? I didn't sort of subordinate to my parents, for example, in terms of them, you know, wanting something from me. So I got to learn what it feels like to listen to my own Mm. once you know I got to feel feel what I felt like to rebel a bit and explore my own interests I explore, experimented with a lot of boys you mm. know and I had a great social life and you know really understood how to cultivate wonderful friendships mm. I you know and ultimately what kind of got me the shift was when I could see that in fact it couldn't have been any other way and in fact if if I had have done what I thought I should do which was really apply myself and not go out all the time and not spend all those time late up at night talking to boys. I possibly would, I possibly would never have been ready for the relationship that I now have with my husband because mm. I met him at the end of year 12. Mm. Had I not had this, you know, fairly mm. intense, you know, period of exploring the world and exploring mm. myself, it's likely that I would not have been in a position to initiate a serious relationship at that age, which mm. was quite young. Mm. And so I thought, I how can I want it to be anything but the way that it was? It served me perfectly. Yes, mm-hmm. it might not have conformed to the way that society thinks you should do year 12, which was what I, and, my, and what my parents thought about how you should do year 12. Mm-hmm. But it was perfect for the evolution of my own growth. And that's the thing. And it's about stripping back what, you know, the, the societal injections and the societal values that often govern the way that we behave to see that this is your own story and that you are simply living your own highest values and you can't ask yourself to do anything but that. There is nothing wrong in that, no matter what anybody else might think, because they're simply living theirs and in trying to inject theirs onto you. Mm. So by doing this, the concept is that you're equilibrating that moment and therefore dissipating the emotional charge yes. that's there, which therefore in present day starts to create more space for opening up to wealth is essentially yes, that's right. Going so that's the process of, so it does two things. It, it unlocks the charge. So it's no longer a big driver for you. And it also creates the process of doing benefits almost like remyelinates your brain. So if we think of the brain as very, very neuroplastic, which we know now it is, you can always ch- you can change it. Mm. Then this actually starts to, not only does it clear the emotional charge within your body, but it starts to repattern and rewire the way that your brain automatically goes to perform tasks and think about things. Mm -hmm. So it then means that you're no longer simply cutting it off, cutting off your ability to even think about how to create wealth 
because you have a you have some kind of subconscious benefit to not create wealth because of this old story you're running mm. you can instead actually go okay you, you move past that and mm. you're actually able to see beyond something that was in your in your way Mm. yeah moving through a block moving through a block essentially so that is how you're clearing it but i mean there's lots there's kind of more simplistic things that you'll see out in the market like denise duffield thomas who does lucky bitch you know she talks a lot about yeah lucky money bitch yeah Yeah. you know um manifesting wealth and but a lot of her affirmations are also around things like i am worthy to have money Mm. And even that idea, like I've got one of the, I've got an affirmation written here, which I've just put on my fridge, which is money comes easily and effortlessly to me because I'm worth it. For some people, you can't even say that to yourself. Mm. If, if you can't even say that to yourself, there are some massive mm. underlying stories that you've told yourself about what it means to have money. And hence go back to our childhood podcast and look at what's yeah. going on. Yeah. And I think there's also What's a huge um, judgment against money particularly in people in sort of the spiritual kind mm. of realm, that the money the altruism. Is, yeah, mm. that altruism is better mm. than having wealth. But in fact, mm. the truth is to have wealth means to be able to... People with, a, with, a, with wealth have power, and power creates influence. And if you have a big vision, and if you want to make a difference, then ultimately you need to create wealth in order to help you drive that. Being able to be visible enough in this yes, world. to be visible enough to to influence the greatest change. Yep. Yeah. To make the contacts you need to make, you yeah. know, to all those kinds of things. Yeah. So it's it's huge, and and there's so much surface stuff that you see out there about budgeting, and um, you know, and in fact, like you know, I spent probably nearly ten years like reading finance books and learning a lot of stuff, but unless you're dealing with the mindsets or the underlying beliefs that are stopping you, you'll always stunt. Like it'll always mm-hmm. cap. Mm. where you can go with Mm. it. And that's why, you know, we have the vast majority of people who are going to be on, you know, welfare in retirement because unless you prioritise building wealth Mm. during your working life and seeing the benefit of starting early and delayed gratification and, you know, investing for 25 years, not some short-term, you know, thing, then then that's where where we'll all end up, you know. And I, and I work in superannuation as well, so I have that, have that view of it too, like seeing that end of it. That, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? Because yeah. we've, we've always had this podcast, you was like, so why did you even, like, value that? Like, how did you think to... Well, because it was never on my radar, right? So you're saying, like, even in high school, you're thinking how can I not have a car loan or how can I, you know, be mortgage free? I was like, no way was that in my mm. conscious mind. Like mm. no way. It's funny, isn't it? And in fact, I actually think back to so financial security was a, was a key value of my mum, even because I didn't, one of the ticks for me, meeting my husband was that he had a house. So, yeah, so see, I, what the actual? I know. So I had a mortgage at 19. <laughs> <laughs> She's like 10 years before me. <laughs> Which is just weird, right? But I really, that was my thing. Like, I really valued it. And, and in fact, in, even choosing to end up in financial services, which I always say, who actually goes to choose a job in that area, <laughs> right? Like, how boring. But part of me obviously wanted to. Because like, how freaking perfect yeah, in a way, right? it's really funny. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> but, but, no, but it it's was just how that interesting, connection. right? Yeah. yeah. How interesting that you're focused on what's the end point of wealth and you're in a business that's literally in the end point of wealth. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? I know, it's funny, isn't it? But yet I've wrestled with it a lot because I too have passed through that, particularly with values around like simple living and sustainability and like the environment, which I've kind of come full, which I've worked on a lot more now. I'm not as ugh about, but that even holding those set of values in a, in a world that's all about creating wealth and even my own desires to create wealth, mm. like, you know, have investments and things. There's a, there's a wrestle for me between those two mm. things because there is an enormous judgment on the lefty kind of social ju- socialism side of the fence, which says that everyone should be equal, blah, 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 um, which wrestles with that idea of individuals creating wealth. Mm. But it actually negates the, the fact that the people with the most wealth contribute the most to the world, create the most change. Yeah, I totally see that. I which, totally see that. Which can be hard for people to grasp because the process of building wealth can seem like... It's a mountain yeah. I can't even conceive. Well, it can be perceived as quite selfish, really, you know, if you are deciding not to go and 
do something that somebody wants you to do with your money, whether it's with them, whether it's you know, going out for a massive dinner or whether it's going on some massive weekend bender because you're instead choosing to put your money into savings, they're going to think you're a Scrooge or whatever they're going to think you are, right? Because that's not, that's not fun. Mm. That's not, you know, being part of something. Mm. But in fact, it's that kind of discipline that it takes to amass great wealth. Mm. You know, you have you have some pleasures for now, but you also save a lot at the same time. Mm. And a lot of people, as soon as they get a pay rise, will just simply just adjust their lifestyle up to that new pay mm. rise, as opposed to living below their means and saving the difference. It creates it's, it takes an enormous amount of discipline, mm. and we also live in an incredibly consumerist society where you're subject to advertising constantly and so you're thinking all the time that head it and we took i think i was reading i don't think i mentioned it here but um head on adaptation so as soon as you get to one thing and i even noticed this with my home renovation like you know you dream about it for so long and then as soon as you're in there it just becomes your new normal mm. as like anything that you get that you dream about and there seems such a leap three months in it's kind of like oh it's just how it is mm. and that that's constant that's how we that's, that's just a constant thing yeah it's interesting isn't it mm. Mm. i even i even think i'm going way even slower than than clearly where you're at because you have such a massive well life history in really getting to this point mm. haven't you so I even think so. I remember I joked about in a couple of podcasts. I started reading. I started to recognise that it was the area of my life that I was the least empowered in. Mm. Like when you talk about the seven areas yeah. of life, it is the area of life that I in inverted commas consistently fail at. Mm. But you know I have enormous empowerment in many of the others. Totally. So I was looking at it going. Even though I had these huge like gut feelings to it, I really need. I really want to start opening and looking at mm. what that is. Cause I want it to change, mm. but part of me also, a lot of me doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went, I'm going really, so I'm not saying I went cause I'm still, I'm going really slowly and gently because I want those shifts to be long lasting, mm. not, you know, bulldoze and not, and so not, hardcore. And not emotional either because that's, a, I mean, Warren Buffett, who's an incredible investor. He's like, you know, seriously like lives in a 40 year old house drives a 20 year old car like multi 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 billionaire so that i mean and that's sometimes what it takes it's that idea of i will live simply to do this I don't, yeah. but i digress but he said that if you can't manage your emotions don't expect to manage your wealth yes isn't that interesting that's mm-hmm. really interesting mm-hmm. so as i think i say this i was joking on that podcast do you remember i was saying i started reading wealth books and i was like falling asleep yes, after every single page that. But here's the discipline, right? So instead of going, oh, I can't read that, I go to sleep. I read those two books cover to cover, page by page. Wow. Like well one page a day or whatever. Yeah. Because I had to sleep in between. Yeah. Like ridiculous. That's how big those blocks were. Right? That's, that's how much recognizing money. recognizing that and continuing to plow through. Then the, the that, discipline. Dis- mm-hmm. Exactly. The discipline comes in. And so I read those, which then started the process of thinking about that, right? So in the back of my mind, I've got all these new thoughts happening, Mm. new awareness, new looking at the way that I see my life or choices or whatever. And even just that is chipping away Mm. at your money blocks that previously you were not even conscious of. You wouldn't have even seen them. And it starts me, one of these books actually said you should be having a money conversation every single day. Mm. So instead of it being this hugely shameful secret thing that you don't talk about with anyone, all of a sudden it's shifting that to... How do you have that conversation every day? Mm. Do you talk about it within, within your family or just generally? No, with anyone. I love it. I love talking about money, but people don't like talking about it because exactly. it's... Exactly. I hate it. talking about money. Yeah. But doesn't that say the mm. difference between you and I, mm. right, is there's so much, for some reason, shame and inverted commas, social etiquette about yeah. not discussing it mm. and, you know, not discussing the struggle mm. and not discussing... Um, 
even tactics, I suppose. Yeah. Like it's, I don't know, it's this really loaded topic. Mm. And so I took that on board and I thought, right, I just need to start opening up that Pandora's box. I just need to not be so shameful about it. It's mm. like, you know, coveting sexuality in some way. Where does that never is going to go well? Is yeah, it? yeah. It's a, well, as we know, like you don't, you don't deal with your sexual sexuality or awaken your sexuality by putting it in the closet. No, exactly. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing with wealth, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. So I started looking at that and as soon as I started doing that, I started to see that there were these women around me that had information that I needed. And it's fascinating to actually start those conversations. What are you doing? How are you doing it? What does your financial life look like? And it's amazing to actually see. And have you found the response to that? Well, I don't ask it that directly. I suppose now I'm more tuned into when those conversations start to arise. So I just probably tune into them where previously I would have like, moved away from them. Yeah, or you might, you know, interestingly enough, because you only perceive what you can, what you're ready to perceive in order to grow. Right. So you might not have even heard them. So you, no, it's true, which, true. Is, which is the thing, like we, 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 our reality is simply defined by our value set. So there's whole things that happen around us. We don't even actually If it's not in absorb. our values. Yeah. yeah, I get that. So I find myself now kind of sucking information from people around me. So there's that. So that's been a really profound change for me was one, just starting to awaken it to start the processes behind, you know, in the backgrounds of my mind, Yeah, which then started conversations around me, both within my relationship and within my community, which make a really big difference. Mm-hmm. And then it was now I'm in the process of looking at just in my everyday, how do you start to open up that stuff. So one of my beautiful friends, um, who listens to this podcast, so hello, said to me, okay, so if you're not in inverted commas earning money, where is it that your abundance is lying that it's coming to you? So, you know, for instance, um, what's happening in your life that you would, if you were earning money, you'd spend money on, but you're not earning money, but it's coming to you anyway. You know, that whole concept is where is that abundance? So, you know, I'm going, oh, um, you know, I really wanted this set of beautiful German pencils to do this coloring. And then we came across a woman who went, I just want to give them to you. Yes. Or, um, I can't even think now, but I've started to really have gratitude for our mat and noticing, you know, like I said to you, I rejigged like four of the rooms in my house completely, repainted them, refurnished them all, da, da, da. And I just reduced, reused, recycled from what was already in my home. And also your incredible knowledge of food and putting in, and in nutrition and putting together incredible meals. Yeah. And, you know, like being able to repurpose stuff like. Oh yeah. Every meal is like two or three for me by the time I remake it in different meals. So it's this concept of, right, if I was not in the lifestyle, I mean, in adverted commas, not earning money, yeah. not money, that's funny, mummy, <laughs> money as a stay at home mum, yeah. where would I be spending it? Because I bet you if I was working full time, earning a wage, da, 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 I would be paying for more food, exactly. more meals, yep. more cleaning. Maybe outsourcing more so things. am I actually in, adver- in effect earning more at the mm. end of the day? I'm actually probably not because I'm spending a lot yep. more. Yeah. And it's looking at the abundance that's coming anyway, right? Yeah. So where am I earning money, but it's in a different form. That transaction mm. looks very different. So I think that's part of coming into gratitude. I read this fantastic quote the other day. It was something like, you'd love it, Bridge. Um, if uh, you can't be happy where you are right now, you're not going to be happy with anything that comes exactly. to you in the future. Well, it's, it's that whole thing about gratitude. Like, That's what you, I mean. You have to, and even a lot of this work also, if we take it further, is about instead of resenting debts, instead of resenting bills, you need to actually thank your debt. So you need to love your debt. She talks about that in the um, secret. Does she? Mm, she I, says when you walk to that letterbox, you have to have a certain fri- mindset and a heartfelt space of, I love this bill because I love that I just have the money to pay for yeah. this and I love that I can give you that and you can give me this. Like she talks yeah, about that. Yeah, well, that's true because yeah. I, I did it on my home loan, right? So I wrote what's left on our home loan and because I'd been feeling like, oh, God, like, you know, just feeling a bit of angst around it because, you know, I'm going on maternity leave soon and just all that stuff. And so I did it. I did enough benefits to having this debt that I got like a tear of gratitude. I was like, mm. oh my God, I love my home loan. Thank you, home loan. Thank you for everything that you've given me. Isn't that and they're going to continue to give me. You know, it's totally flipping your perspective of that sense of fear or foreboding mm. of when another bill comes in. Foreboding, yes. You know, it. to actually. And I mean, that requires some strategies too. So obviously, yeah, put away some money so that when you get bills, it's not scary and there's not that fear anymore. You, you, you take that out of your realm of mm. 
worry mm. to then take on bigger mm. challenges. So this is the point I was making coming full circle Sorry. back to yeah, you. No, 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 don't apologise, but that's exactly, thank you, just reminded me, is when we're looking at this concept of what is financial abundance, that's the next step that I'm at now. So that's the step I'm at now is going through every single one of my household bills mm. and making sure I'm getting the best, cheapest deal on every single one of those things. Mm. I just did my car insurance last week and I saved $300 on my car that's insurance. So fantastic. Like that's $300 I'm in inverted commas earning. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because I'm not spending it. And so the question is then, what do you do with that? Yeah, well, I don't know, Bridget. I haven't got there. <laughs> <laughs> because, because to build your self-worth further would be, okay, well, I was going to pay that anyway. So instead I'm going to create an account that's separate that I don't touch. And that's where those little windfalls go. Oh, that's interesting. Because even if you've got a debt, it's really important for your own um self-worth your own discipline it's like a psychological thing even saving something even if it's like five dollars a month just that habit of saving Mm -hmm. and disciplining yourself to never touch totally shifts the way that you think about money as instead being as as no longer being something that you simply either spend on yourself or your bills or your you know whatever else comes in but instead some of it no matter how small, goes into a fund that accumulates over time. Mm. There's something incredibly powerful about that. And it's, it's hard because sometimes, you, you know, you kind of go, but I've got this debt and that debt. Even if it's tiny, it's just that, it's just that process, you know. And, and it, perhaps, you know, if you've got massive credit card debts, that might not be a good idea because you want to clear them. But it's even keeping a spreadsheet so you can see that you actually are chipping away at your credit card debt and then that in a form is saving because mm. it's reducing the debt that you're paying. Yeah, that's interesting. Right? Mm. That's my next step. Mm. It's powerful though, eh? <laughs> because I mean, everything comes back to mindset and self worth. Mm. Mm. So I've got some. I've got some. I don't know if it's worth me running through these, but I've got some principles of kind of financial success which I could read through if these are useful. But it talks about that you know the number one thing is save money. I think people get caught up in wanting to. Um, you know, invest or thinking that they should be further on that they are, but it's just that simple habit of saving whatever you can just that just starts it off. You knowing your values. So we do this, we're going to, we do this in our course and we'll be doing this in the first week of our online program, which is starting really soon. And it's like the hierarchy of your values dictate your destiny. If you don't have um, wealth in the top three values, you'll never amass a great fortune, which might not be a value for you. That's fine. But you want to have it in sort of the top five or six or you'll pretty much never, you'll have more month at the end of your money than you have money at the end of your month. If you, if that's the organization of them having a strategy. So as, as I said, even just $5 a month, like whatever it is, Mm. have a cause bigger than yourself. So if you don't have a cause that's bigger than you, you'll never get beyond you. So if your cause is to, um, I don't know, have enough money to go to, go overseas in three years but you have no cause beyond that then you'll create that but then you'll just stagnate because you haven't given yourself something bigger Mm. to work on and you know if your core if your cause is only your family and providing for your family then that will cap your ability to grow wealth as well you know if you want to grow lots of wealth you want to look at community city state country and have you know really ostentatious you know kind of goals or causes to keep you coming up with the ideas that you need to create and put into action to fulfill because mm. it's, it's all about, you know, what you're perceiving. Develop a series of cushions. That's the idea of having like cash cushions so that you, you know, have money there to, to shield yourself against interest rate rises or unexpected bills, all those kinds of things. Appreciate money. So that idea that we talked about in terms of being grateful for your debt um, pay yourself first. Oops, sorry. So most people pay all the bills that come in and then give themselves whatever's left. But it's about developing a practice of giving yourself something first that just goes into savings. You won't manage your money till you manage your emotions, which is what we said. Make affirmations. It's really powerful. One of the ones I read out before. Um, what else have we got? That'll probably wrap it up there. Because there's heaps, but, you know, that's enough. (laughs) It's a massive topic. It's really massive. It's a massive massive topic. And if you want us to deep dive into any of these, I mean, I'd love to pull apart Bridget's body of knowledge anyway because I'm certainly wanting to awaken and empower this area of my life that 
I feel at the moment is disempowered. So if you as our listeners need to know any more, please enter in those questions, mm. email us, Facebook. And it's really, you know, it's a, it doesn't matter where, wherever you're at, it's, it's just being open to learning. I mean, like I have a whole bunch of limitations and challenges that I face in it. And it's just, you know, as we, as you'll notice from the podcast, like Jules has a zone of genius in another area that I'm just like scratching the surface <laughs> on, right? So, you know, so we, and I think it's about respecting that and honoring but that. this is the tribe, right? Yeah. This is... You and I and all you peeps out there, this is our tribe. Those conversations and that processing you, I don't have access to in our day-to-day mm-hmm. life. Because people this don't talk about it. This is the place for it. Yeah. This is women inspiring women to lead the lives that they want to lead. Mm. This is changing your future by doing the work now. I so love that. God, you know, like, that. but that's what this is. It is. It's true. That's what mm. this tribe is. And whatever you're going through, on some level, we're going through. Yeah. So, and same for whatever we're going through. And most likely, you know, because we're talking about it on a yeah. podcast, you're going through on some yeah. level. So it's this constant thing that we, when we're, you know, really being vulnerable and coming together like this in a tribe, which is what Nourishing the Mother is, mm. this tribe of women mm. on an empowering womanhood and motherhood journey. And, and are willing to really expose yourself to yourself in mm. that journey, mm. you know, to realize. And you need a tribe to do that. Yeah. Trying to do that unsupported is like jumping out of a plane without a parachute. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it can be very easy for us or for me to forget that because when you have the right people around you, it seems natural to explore these topics and to stretch beyond your comfort zone and flip your perspective. But mm. unless you're surrounding yourself with other people who are doing that, it can be incredibly isolating and you're going to think like you're a bit of a basket case, you know, yeah. because you are asking yourself questions that a lot of people will never ask themselves. No, but often it's because we're not around the people that influence us to ask those questions. Yeah. yeah. You're in a funk. You seek out the people that are on an inspired path of some sort, because mm. that you will naturally awaken that within yourself yeah. just by being around them. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Love it. So please connect with us on Facebook. Yes. We actually are really loving the communications and the messages and the insights into how this is shifting your world and it mm. creates more conversations between us, which creates more podcasts. Yeah. So please keep yeah. that coming. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and sign up for Fun Stuff Fridays, which we're having a lot of fun with. A super, super, super short email on yes. the join our tribe, nourishingthemother.com.au. We do have a bit of fun with that. We? we do have a fun. <laughs> so it's any, any really cool stuff that we're loving on in our lives and homes in the week and it can be totally random it can be totally fun it can be totally kitsch just fun stuff sharing our lifestyle really is all that is and nourishing the mother courses.com forward slash seven tips is um for our seven tips to realign yourself and your life Mm. and we're about to upload a playlist onto that called nourish your woman because you know how much i love playlists (laughs) and i love dancing in my kitchen When you downloaded my pleasure, your son, you sent me that take the message, this playlist is killer. I was like, yes. <laughs> I can't wait it though, because this one's going to be awesome. And then the new one, the new one. This is, one's different though, right? This one's different. all about connecting to your woman, to that, you know, heart expansion, just. Juiciness. Yes. Mm. Yes. That's what that is. So look out for that coming up on Nourishing the Mother Courses and you can opt in for that. Cool. So until next week. Hang on, hang oh, on. Hang on no. To connect with you, Oh, Bridget. yeah, whoops. Um, <laughs> Swervinsandcastles.com. And connect, to connect with you, Julie. Thepleasurenutritionist.com. Mm, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next week when we continue to peel back the layers on your mothering journey. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.